Okay. Uh, so what I have here is an example for uh, DC generators. So this one is in your slides. Hanapin nyo na lang. So basically, uh, the machine spe uh, specifications of this generator is uh, it has 8 poles. So for north and then for south, you have uh, a rated output of 25 kilowatts. So this is your electrical output. The electrical output is uh, rated at 25 kilowatts uh, and uh, with a rated terminal voltage of 120 volts. Now, this machine is duplex lap. So you have a multiplicity of two. Uh, well, it just means that you have two plex for this machine. Uh, it has 64 coils uh, with each coil having 16 turns. And it's rated to run at 2,400 revolutions per minute. So uh, what we're asked to find here is the strength of your magnet, the flux per pole, to produce the rated voltage, 120 volts at no load. So yeah, yeah. So we'll be producing a uh, no load voltage of 120 volts. Uh, the current per path. So what a uh, rated load. So what's that path? I'll explain it later. Uh, you probably have an idea of that. And then the torque. Uh, in the torque at the rated load. Now, uh, so this is the schematic for this uh, example. Uh, this is a permanent magnet DC having eight poles so you have the field from the like the magnetic field from the permanent magnet set up and then you have the armature so at at no load that just tells you that the output power is, is zero but it doesn't mean that the voltage is zero uh, what it means is that the the load current which is essentially the armature current is zero that is no load now if the terminal voltage is 120 volts at no load, if this terminal voltage is 120 volts, and if this is not loaded, meaning uh, the power at the output is zero, therefore IA is equal to zero, and because of this IA equal to zero, the voltage drop here is equal to zero. So if this voltage drop is equal to zero, that makes EA equal to VT by KVL that's this one so that makes your EA equal to 120 volts and that induced voltage at the armature is equal to Ponzi over 68 now this Ponzi this is just uh, your number of poles your RPM your total number of conductors your parallel paths now if we isolate the flux per pole from this equation you'll get this equation and uh, if we substitute the given, you have 8 volts, 2400 RPM, as rated uh, RPM. You have uh, num total number of conductors, so you get that from 2C and C. Just remember that formula. Uh, that's basically twice of, uh, well, twice times the number of turns. Because for each turn, you have two conductors, so you have 16 turns you have 32 conductors times that is just per coil so times the total number of coils which is 64 so you have the total number of conductors and then you have the number of parallel paths that's a so you have 16 paths i'll explain the illustration for that later now if you substitute all of them and then you solve for the flux per pole so you have three mill uh, three milliweber per pole so that's that's basically how much uh, flux should be present in each pole for you to produce 120 volts at the at the armature. Now, this is a permanent magnet setup, so yeah, you'll be needing some uh, magnet that has this this much uh, strength uh, that that has strength to produce this much flux. Now, uh, so we're done with the flux per pole. We get the current at the rated load. So for the current at the rated load, uh, the rated load is actually is 25 watts, uh, kilowatts. It's 25 kilowatts, and that 25 kilowatts is equal to voltage terminal and times the load current. So if we want to have a 120 volts voltage terminal, so we can easily get the load current as 625 over 3. Now what does this imply? 
this implies that if you have a voltage of 120 volts therefore your induced voltage should be greater than 120 and how do we how do we do that from the previous solution you get an induced voltage of 120 if you are running at 2400 having 8 poles having 2 times 64 times 16 conductors having 2 times 8 parallel paths and having 3 uh, 2.93 milliweber uh, per pole of amount of flux well of course you cannot change the number of poles because it's the construction it's uh it's the design of the machine same with the uh, same with the total number of conductors and the parallel paths so we're left with uh, the flux and the uh, rpm as the variables however since this is a permanent dc machine therefore once you install that magnet having this much flux then this flux tends to be constant so what it's really the, uh, the, the real variable the only variable here to produce a voltage that is greater than 120 is your rpm therefore for us to run a rated load for you to have 120 on the terminal your ea should be greater than 120 and that just means that you should run your machine at a speed greater than 2400 because if you run it at 2400 then you'll get an ea of 120 as seen on the previous uh, solution and then you, at full load you won't be getting 120 at the terminals so that's that's just how that uh that solution works now well uh, well in this case we're fortunate we're not asked for uh the induced induced voltage but definitely the induced voltage at that armature is greater than 120 and that leaves us with 625 over 3 amperes at the at the load as the load current now if we look at the terminal uh, sorry if we look at the armature take note that you have a multiplicity of 2 since this is duplex so that just means that if you have a set of parallel paths that Th that set of parallel paths is divided into two plex you have this you have this as the first plex and then you have this as the second plex now for each plex you have eight parallel paths one two three four five six seven eight and the same for the second plex now these two plex are in parallel with each other making the total number of parallel paths equal to 16. so that's that's basically uh how you compute for the plugs uh, for the paths and for the current per path it's just the total current at the armature 625 over 3 divided by the total number of uh, paths which is 16 so that leaves you with 625 over 48 amperes per path so how do we get the uh, so we're done with the first two objectives two requirements and then the induced torque at the rated load so to get the induced torque uh let's look at the converted power so the converted power is basically the power developed at the armature where is that uh, yeah, yeah the power developed here at the armature so the power developed here this is where your p convert exists you have the power there as eaia so that's voltage times current and since it is convertible well that's why we call it p convert since it is easily convertible uh, directly sorry directly convertible to uh, mechanical power that's also equivalent to torque induced times uh, rpm induced so that's this sorry that's this formula that's that formula now uh, if we re rewrite this formula to isolate torque induced then you have this this formula uh, we can further well it's it's not a simplification but we can further represent this by taking the variables for ea the variables for ea are upon c over 60a now take note that this n this is speed of rotation and this omega is also same as speed of rotation however if you divide n and omega they are not supposed to uh 
they are not supposed to cancel directly you can cancel them because this n is in revolutions per minute while this omega is in rads per second so you can represent this omega in terms of uh, its equivalent revolutions per minute for you to simplify this uh, uh, equation further that is if you have the omega as uh, rads per second you multiply it by 60 you get rads per minute and then you multiply it by number of revol one revolution you multiply it by one revolution per two pi rads so that makes this uh, its equivalent uh, speed in rpm so uh, the omega would be equal to, well, isolating this omega, that makes omega a function of n. So that's omega is equal to 2 pi over, uh, times n all over n rpm, at times n all over 60. So if you substitute this omega in this equation, previous equation, that's omega, sorry, this one, that's omega, so that makes uh that enables you to cancel this n also this 60 such that you're left with posi over 2 pi a and if you solve for that that's just 99.47 newton meters so that's that's it so that's for dc generators uh permanent dc